That's right, play that funky music, white boy. This video today, all about white boys that have been sampled in hip hop. Some great music on here. Absolute mix, things from the 90s, 2000s, more modern stuff. So a real varied bag for this one. Some great white artists have been sampled over the years. This is just a selection of some of my favorite ones. All the music playing in the background, my own productions. I've got six albums out in total. There's a link in description where you can download those albums. If you sign up as a member to my channel as well, send me an email and I'll give you codes for downloading all six of those albums for free. You'll also get access to exclusive members only videos. So those videos are the samples running straight through without me commentating on them. And it's also a way to support me if you want to do that. For those members that have joined recently, some of you have emailed me, but if you've not already, drop us an email and I'll send you those codes for the albums. So, let's jump in, let's check what the first track is. Bob James, what a way to start things off. That track Nautilus has been sampled hundreds of times in hip hop. Many different parts of the track have been used. So that is just one example of many, many. Bob James himself, been sampled thousands of times. There is just so many tracks. I should do a video just about his samples and I could easily do one just about that one track Nautilus. Just so many great tracks have used him. So let's see what's next up. Big Jarvis with Horizon Drive. He was born in New Jersey, jazz guitarist, although it's not the guitar that's been sampled on that. But halfway through the track, big keyboard solo, guy called Barry Miles that actually played that. Vic Joris did a lot of albums, over 30 of them. That one was off his second album released in 1980. Primo's ear on that, absolutely amazing. That he's picked out that real small part of it. Wasn't discovered that for a long time after that track, Mass Appeal, came out. Just chops so well. If you get that sample, load that up into your MPC, whatever equipment you're using, try and recreate it. It's actually pretty difficult. So real props to Primo for what he's done with that. Absolutely great track. Let's see what the next one is. One of the most recognisable 90s samples, that one, definitely. So Jack Bruce, he's from Scotland, and he was the singer and bass player in the band Cream as well. Smith & Wesson, Bucktown. The Shining album came out in 95, but that Bucktown single was released a year earlier, back in 94. Such a great track, that one. It's a simple loop with drums over the top, but it just works so well. Produced by the Beat Miners, great crew who produced a lot of stuff for Smith & Wesson and also Black Moon as well as many others. So let's check what the next one is. Another Bob James sample, this time with the theme from the TV show Taxi. So that Souls of Mischief track didn't actually get a proper release until that compilation album in 96, but it was recorded earlier than that. Never got released because Bob James refused to let him use that sample. He hated how much they'd sped it up, just really didn't like the sound of it and said they couldn't use it. He's really changed his mind now. He works a lot with track lip. He doesn't really care who uses his samples. 
as long as he gets paid for it. Yeah, he must be worth quite a few quid now. With all his tracks he's released and the amount of royalties he must be getting from sample clearance. So yeah, great musician as I said earlier. Let's see what's next up. Bobby Caldwell, musician from New York, passed away actually earlier this year, back in March. Been sampled a few times in hip hop as well. That common track, produced by JD, Jay Diller. Just such a great use of that sample. The drum pattern over the top of that, to me, is what really, really adds to it. Just such distinct drums by Diller that I know a lot of people try to copy but never quite get it right, quite the same as what Dilla did. Just think what sort of music Dilla would be producing today if he was still around. And I've said this before, River Roulette episode with Jay Dilla would have just been amazing. So anyway, let's check out what the next track is. Enjo Morricone, Italian composer, absolute legend. The amount of soundtracks that he did during his time. Good, the bad and the ugly, probably his most famous. But he did soundtracks for Once Upon a Time in America, epic film with De Niro in it, and more recent things, Tarantino film, The Hateful Eight, released hundreds and hundreds of albums and so many film scores as well. Jay-Z track, again produced by Primo, chopping on that again, really, really good. Chopped it up, completely changed the rhythm of the original and just flipped that into a real good, good track. Real head nodding track, that one. Let's see who's up next. Super Tramp of Crime of the Century off the album of the same name. British American group started in London in the late 60s. Done a lot of albums. Fabulous track as well. Produced by Just Blaze. He's produced some big tracks. Done a lot of stuff with Jay Z, Kanye West. I think he's either one of those producers that you really like or you really hate. I'll leave that up to you to decide. But yeah, great track that one. Works really well with that piano sample. So let's check what the next one is. Fever Tree, pretty obscure rock group really from Houston, Texas. Did four albums, three in the 60s and then the final one in 70. Mad villain track though, that's Madlib and MF Doom together. Great combination. I'm a big fan of Madlib as a producer and I also really rate MF Doom as well. Yeah, that Mad Villain the album, real good one that. Real light listening to that one. Let's check out the next one. The Singers Unlimited, American vocal group, did a lot of albums in the 70s and early 80s. Genius sampling that one by Jay Diller, who's taken the word Claire and turned it into Player, just by adding that drum at the start of it. Also chopped up some of the other vocals playing that underneath. Just such a great track, that one, the Slum Village track. Real, real good sampling. Again, produced by Jay Diller. Amazing producer he was. Sting 
the track there. Real name Gordon Sumner, British guy, known for being in the band The Police. Also an actor, re-watched a film with him in recently. British film Lock, Stock and Two Smoking Barrels. Guy Ritchie film. Good film that, if you've not seen it. Give it a check. Naz track as well, big track that. Produced by Poke and Tone. Also goes by the name Track Masters. Big, big producers, done a lot of stuff for Naz. Also with Will Smith. Very different style, but getting jiggy with it was also one of their productions. So they've produced quite a variety of things. But yeah, big track that one, Naz the Message. Great one. Let's check out what's next up. Why is Jada Kiss as hard as it gets? Why is the industry designed to keep the artists in debt? And why them dudes ain't riding if they part of your set? Gong Sample, who are a French group. Pretty crazy band. Done over 50 albums, but they're into psychedelic and aliens. Jada Kiss track as well. Big track that. Got nominated for a Grammy. Didn't win, but got nominated. Produced by Havoc from Mob Deep. So very different than some of his stuff that he did for Mob Deep that was real hardcore. This is very much the opposite of that. Real upbeat track. Quite commercial sounding. But just goes to show he can produce different styles of music. So let's see what's up next. Joe Cocker, a lot of people think he's American, but he's actually British. That sample there, you were probably expecting California Love, but no, I thought I'd go with a real original. Ultramagnetic MCs, funky, first group that I'm aware of that actually sampled that. EPMD also used it. A lot of other people before California Love used it. Ultramagnetic MCs, they used to spell it like I've showed on the screen there as two separate words and they then changed it to ultramagnetic all as one word. So I am just showing it how it was displayed on that 12 inch of theirs. So let's see what's next up. Charles Aznavour, French guy, did well over a hundred albums and he lived to the age of 96. Not a direct sample this one, it's been replayed to sound like the original which Dre often does. Main reason for that, you can save a lot of money on sample clearance because you've only got to pay the original composer rather than for using the actual recording itself. So there are actually people employed for record labels specifically to replay samples because they can actually save an absolute fortune from doing that. So let's see what the next one is. track there he was actually the saxophone player so it wasn't his part of the track that was actually sampled it was a pianist called Barry Harris that appeared on that track what Havoc has done with this sample is just amazing pitched it down that much that it is just completely disguised you just would not recognize what's been done with that just from hearing that sample on its own if you are interested look on my channel at disguise samples and I've actually shown on my MPC. I've loaded that sample up and completely demonstrated how he slowed it down, exactly what he's done with that. So yeah, give that a check if that's of interest to you. But yeah, brilliant Mob D track, real good sampling, and it was one that wasn't discovered again for many, many years after it came out because it was so well hidden. Let's check what the next track is. Notice that I've been wrapped out as focus. Dude, compared to this one. 
Herb Alpert, been sampled many, many times in hip hop. Probably his most famous one, Rise, used on Hypnotized by Biggie. Method Man track, Release Your Delph. I know it says 95 on the screen. That was when the actual single came out, but it did appear a year before on his Tikal album, his debut album. Great production there by RZA. That album as well, he was the first out of the Wu-Tang crew to actually do a solo album, first of many. So yeah, classic 90s hip hop there with great production by RZA. So I'm actually going to call it the end there. Lots and lots of more that I've got in mind that I can show you, but I think I'll leave that to a part two. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you want to see a part two to this. Drop a like, leave a comment, subscribe if you want to see more. Download my albums, join up as a member, get the albums for free. And thanks for watching.